This just in, the moon is made of cheese. Bigfoot was seen last night talking with Loch Ness Monster. An alien spacecraft mysteriously landed near Roswell. The Titanic sank. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Abraham Lincoln was an American president. Men can get pregnant. There are indeed married bachelors and Humpty Dumpty is still on the wall. Did you know all that? Do you believe all that? Do you believe any of that? And the bigger question perhaps is, does it really matter what anyone believes? Well, I guess if you believe it's a good idea to inject lava into your veins to cure your arthritis, it might matter to you that somebody steps in, corrects your thinking, and saves your life by stopping you from actually doing such a ridiculous thing. Point is, wrong beliefs can have deadly consequences. What we believe matters. But I have a bigger question than the bigger question that preceded this big question. A deeper question, perhaps. Why do you believe what you believe? I ask this because your what can crumble in a second if you don't have a strong why, even if your what is right, huh? Yeah. In fact, a large percentage of people are convinced to change their what, not because their what is wrong, but because their why is weak. Yeah. Go ahead and wrap that up and we'll snack on it in a second. For now, let's consider one of the statements I open with and challenge the what with a why. The moon is made of cheese. True or false? False. Why do I believe that, you might ask? Well, because the moon would be far less dense and therefore the Earth's tides would be extremely different. Cheese would have broken apart and disappeared already, and eyewitnesses have been to the moon and brought back rock samples. No cheese. I could go on and on here, but the take home here is you should have a legitimate why behind your proclaimed what, especially if it's important. Which takes us to another statement, a statement of utmost importance. Jesus resurrected from the dead. True or false? Well, let's say you think that's true, but then Donnie the Atheist asks you why you believe what you believe. Maybe he goes on to give opposing views. He quotes scientists, shows you documentaries, and gives you what he believes is hard evidence that he thinks utterly destroys your so-called faith. What would you do? Panic? Cry? Run? Or could you definitely defeat Donnie's deficient diatribe, declaring definitive data, duly demonstrating doctrinal dexterity, and dutifully dismantling Donnie's downright dubious demonstrations double time? I'm asking. Just asking. I mean, you could say you believe the resurrection is true because of the eyewitness testimony, the explosion of Christianity soon after the event, the Roman leaders admitting the tomb was empty, or for a host of other reasons, powerfully presented in debunk number 12. How's that for cross-marketing? Look, bottom line is this. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Titus 1.9 commands, He must hold firm to the trustworthy word is taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. And Colossians 4.5 through 6 says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Now, it seems to me that in order to do these things, you got to have a strong why behind your what. That's just how it works, people, which means the statement that it doesn't matter why you believe what you believe has been debunked. Adios.